What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. So it's that time of year again where a lot of us are going to be spending hours or more outside in the summer heat maintaining and mowing our lawns. Now I myself try to get up as early as possible when it comes to lawn maintenance to try to avoid that summer heat, especially because summers just get hotter and hotter. For me, it's one of those things that I didn't mind doing when I was younger, but I've started to dread now, especially because I'm getting older and again, because it's getting hotter and hotter. So today's product review video will hopefully be a solution for any of you who are looking for a product that will allow you to replace that chore and do something else with your time. So in today's video, we'll be checking out this all new Luba 2 autonomous robot lawnmower from Emotion. Now, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you may have seen my previous video where I unboxed and reviewed the Luba 1, which was the previous model of this lawnmower, and has already done an amazing job taking that chore off of my hands. Now, I'm hoping this year's model will do an even better job and has a lot of enhancements that are better than the previous version. Now, I recently got to chat with Memotion team members and got a sneak peek of this Luba 2 at CES this past January. And for today's video, Memotion did send me this Luba 2 to unbox, test out, and review on this channel. Now I'll be checking out and sharing with you all the new features and everything new that this mower has to offer. So definitely stay tuned as we go through a pretty comprehensive review about this mower. Now, this particular model is the all-wheel drive 5000H model, which retails for about $2,978 which is a little bit on the pricier side than a lot of Memotion competitors in this space. This mower has a cutting height of 2.2 to 4.0 inches and can mow lawns up to 1.25 acres. Now, what's different about this year's Luba 2 is that it comes in four different variants with two versions for each variant, which gives you eight different versions to choose from, which can be a lot, but does offer up a lot of variability for your needs. Now those different versions are the all-wheel drive 1000, 3000, 5000, and 10,000 models, which range from $2,099 to $4,099 in price. Now each model has a regular version which has a cutting height of 1 inch to 2.7 inches, as well as a version like this one that is raised a little bit higher with a cutting height of 2.2 to 4 inches. Now the higher model is for those of you that like to keep your grass just a little bit longer like myself. Now the biggest difference between each of the different variants is the amount of space that it can cover for each mowing session, which ranges from 0.25 acres for the 1000 up to 2.5 acres for the 10,000 model. Now, like I briefly mentioned from a pricing perspective, it is one of the more expensive robotic lawn mowers on the market. However, for the amount of tech and the durability that you get, which we'll showcase in this video, as well as from my perspective, it is well worth it based on my past usage with the previous Luba 1 model. We'll see how the Luba 2 does in this video. Anyways, stay tuned and we'll share with you the unboxing, the setup, and a few scenarios where we tested this all new robotic lawnmower out, and I'll let you know what I think. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so if you watched my CES coverage, we briefly talked and learned a little bit about this Luba 2, and we got to see it working on an artificially set up AstroTurf lawn. Now, I was definitely impressed how it navigated and climbed the steep incline that they had set up. Of course, that setup was an ideal scenario in a controlled environment. So I am excited that Memotion sent me this model to test out and experiment on my own lawn. Now, to be completely straightforward, the terrain in my backyard isn't very challenging, and there aren't many, if any, obstacles that will really challenge this Luba 2. But we definitely will try out some scenarios to see if we can test out the different features that come with this Luba 2, especially the new ones that weren't available in the Luba 1. Now, of course, we'll start with a little bit of unboxing footage, and while you're watching that unboxing footage of the Luba 2, Let's talk a little bit about some of the features and enhancements that you can probably expect from this year's model. Now first and foremost, the most notable change is of course the added module on top of the mower itself, 
which is an all new 3D vision system which helps the mower navigate if it loses signal or visibility to the satellite. Now this is something that is unique and was added based on a lot of customer feedback. So it's great that Memotion is listening to their customers. Now, like its predecessor, it also does come and have a charging garage where it can return to and charge with an optional cover, which you'll use to protect the mower itself from rain, hail, or any kind of other inclement weather where you don't want to, want to get the mower wet. It's also got a number of accessories as well as a new and improved antenna module, which I think feels a lot more sturdy and a lot more durable. Now like the Luba One, you also do get an assorted number of data and power cables for different kinds of configurations. Now the good thing about all of these cables is that they were very generous with the length which means that you can place the charging bay pretty much anywhere in your yard and still be able to plug it in. Now in addition to all those standard accessories, you do also get a mounting bracket for the antenna itself, which I do find helpful especially if you're like me and you don't want to use the included rods to mount the antenna on the ground. I myself prefer to mount the antenna up high on the wall to keep it off the ground and also to make sure it gets better visibility to any satellites so that way you get a better signal and better coverage for the mower itself. Now the mower has pretty much the same design as the previous version with a few minor changes that I think makes the Luba 2 even better. And FYI, the mower itself does have some weight to it, and it's a little heavier than some of the other mowers that I've reviewed in the past. In fact, I actually did throw out my back a couple days ago lifting this thing, so that's something you definitely have to be careful of. Now, for my install, I did decide to mount the satellite antenna because I wanted to make sure that I had better visibility to the sky and also better coverage across my yard for controlling the mower itself. Now I did also try putting it on the pole and sticking it in the ground because I do have another one of these mowers as well. So I did try both options. Overall, installation is fairly easy and it requires you to run the cable from the antenna down to the base station itself. Now when it comes to plugging in and powering both the base station and the antenna, you do have the option to power the antenna separately or you can plug it in directly into the base station and use a single plug from the base station to the outlet. Now this is the option that I chose so I would only take up one power outlet instead of two which is I think the option that most people will choose. I'd say probably the only time you'd choose to power them separately is if you're placing your antenna somewhere else in your yard and your base station somewhere else. But typically I like to power the antenna by plugging it into the base station so I'm only using one plug, especially since I usually keep them pretty close to each other. Now when it comes to the base station itself, I do like this new version because the cables are built into the base station instead of needing to plug the cables into a port on the station itself. This is something that I found troublesome on the Luba 1 model of the base station because there are little network jacks and little plugs that you would plug in and they were always exposed to the grass and allowed for dirt to get inside the plug itself. So I'm glad in this new version of the base station, everything is already pre-connected and built in as part of the base station itself. This is better when it comes to weather protection and durability overall. So I'm glad Memotion made that change when it came to the plugs themselves and all the different cables that are coming with the stations themselves. Now the one thing that you're going to want to do and make sure you install and the thing that's newest about this Luba 2 is installing the 3D Vision system. Now that module is pretty simple to install. All you have to do is unscrew the plate cover on the top of the mower and then replace it with the 3D camera module by connecting a few wires and then securing the modules using the screws that came with the packaging. It's really simple and it fits aesthetically well on the mower itself. Now I'm hoping by plugging this in it's still protected by the rain because there are some rubber gaskets around the side just to make sure that there's some weatherproofing there. Then just like the Luba 1 because the design is pretty much the same, you simply just need to connect the front bumper by inserting it into the connectors on the front of the mower itself. Now one thing that I did notice while I was looking over the Luba 2 is that they did remove the two bumpers on the side of the mower. Which I guess it makes sense since I rarely have seen the mower impact anything on the side. So 
It's now just a little handle with a solid flush plastic cover on the side and there's no longer any bumpers there. Plus the fact that the 3D Vision camera should be able to make up for those missing bumpers. And again, because in the past on the Luba One, I don't think I've ever seen it run into anything on the side or the, any kind of use for those side bumpers. Now I mentioned this before, but one thing to note is that there are two height versions for the Luba Two. Now the unit that I received is the high cut version, which stands a little bit taller than the Luba One. And that's something you're going to notice, especially when it comes to parking in the garage. You won't be able to use the original Luba 1 garage with the Luba 2, especially if you've got the high height Luba 2. So unfortunately, that means the charging station that I had previously for my Luba 1 won't work because my Luba 1 was a low cut version and this is a high cut version. Now, if you do choose, there is also a low cut version for the Luba 2, which in that case, I guess then you can use the Luba 1 garage. Now, just like the previous Luba 1, the Luba 2 is an all wheel drive mower and it operates without a perimeter wire, which I think most mowers these days do, um, which I'm glad, because it does use instead a mixture of GPS, bumpers, and its various cameras, and of course the 3D vision system to navigate and avoid obstacles. Now the mower itself should and seems to work well on all types of terrain. And in my case, after setting up the perimeter and mowing areas, it can also handle some pretty tall grass, which is something that I'm pleased to say that this thing is very powerful and very rarely did it ever get stuck. Now let's talk about ease of use. If you've ever used a drone or an RC car, or even if you haven't, you can definitely control this Luba 2 when you're setting the perimeter using the app. It's very responsive and it's easy to maneuver and pretty much anyone can use this thing. In fact, because of how it looks, I take it as both a toy and a tool for managing and mowing your lawn. Now, as far as capabilities, like the previous version, you can also set different mowing zones and even do not mow areas that are off limits for the mower. Now, I didn't get the chance to test it out in my yard, but the Luba 2 can handle steep slopes up to 38 degrees and possibly even more because of its adaptive suspension and all wheel drive motors, which is something that I did get to see at CES because I know the hill that they set up was a lot more steep than about 45 degrees. Now just like the Luba 1, the tires on the Luba 2 are multi-directional in the front, which allow it to turn in place and steer in all kinds of cool directions. Now this isn't a feature that most lawnmowers do have, and it's unique about this mower, which allows it to do these circular motions and cool images that I don't see with other lawnmowers. So just like the rest of this mower and the materials that it's made of, the wheels themselves are very durable. The back tire are made up of these rubber non-flat tires and the front tires are made of this durable plastic that goes in multi-directions. Now another surprising feature that I found very helpful is that the Luba 2 is also compatible with pretty much every home automation system that's available, whether it's Alexa or Google Home. So using and controlling the mower is as simple as verbally commanding it to do something and start mowing the lawn. Now, when it comes to the mowing blades, I'm still a little on the fence about the use of these different little razor blades, but it does seem to do an amazing job cutting the grass, especially if it's set to continuously mow day after day, which means microscopic and barely noticeable grass clippings. But you can see that it does cover a large area and they do overlap to make sure that you do get a good cut and that everything that this thing rolls over is chopped into very fine little bits. Okay, and then finally, just like the Luba 1, the Luba 2 can be virtually self-reliant and self-operating because it will automatically return to the charging base to charge when it's low on battery. And then it will continue mowing where it left off once it's done charging. Now, one of the other small improvements that I noticed are the buttons on the top of the mower itself. Instead of independent pressable buttons, you've got these flexible buttons that are built into the frame itself, 
which is an improvement in waterproofing and moisture penetration control. So it's good that these are now one little pad itself and all the buttons are located under this waterproof surface. Now in addition to that, you can also monitor and track the Luba 2 using the app no matter where you are and at any time. That and an additional feature which allows you to use the vision camera to see exactly what the mower sees through a live video feed. So that's definitely something that's pretty cool about this is a POV version of everything that you're mowing and your surroundings. So you can even use this as a security device when you're not home if you wanted to mow around and check the perimeter of your house. Now in addition to all of that, they also did build some fun features into this new mower itself, which allows you to cut different customized patterns into your lawn, as well as pictures and different shapes, and even other creative designs, which you know I might do in a follow-up video when my grass is a lot longer. But I think what you can do is you can also upload an image and then you can mow out that image on your lawn itself. So the example that I saw at CES was the Memotion logo that was carved and cut into the grass using the mower itself. So that's something that's fun and cool about this mower that I haven't seen on other uh, robotic lawn mowers available on the market. Now overall, I do love this new model. Memotion took what was great from the Luba 1 and they enhanced the Luba 2 with even new and better features and they made amazing changes and updates based on a lot of customer feedback which is something that I guess we can all appreciate is that they do listen to their customer. At the end of the day the Luba 2 is definitely a step forward and I am super excited to see what enhancements are made through future software updates and hardware iterations. Because that's one thing that I also didn't mention is this thing does get better because they do do over the air software updates. And of course, because they do listen to customer advice and they will most likely add enhancements based on customer feedbacks in future models. Now, the only contention that I do have is of course the price. This may be one of the most expensive autonomous mowers on the market, but of course, like I mentioned, you definitely do get your money's worth when it comes to build quality, materials, and of course features. After all, you do get what you pay for, and if you're in the market for something that's gonna last, this Luba 2 AWD Autonomous Mower is definitely the one I would recommend you get. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. If you did, please support this growing channel by smashing that like button and subscribing. Now I'm probably going to do a follow-up and comparison video, so please make sure that you also ring that bell icon so that you can get notified when I post new content. Now if you want one of these for yourself, I will of course leave a link in the description section below. And then finally, if you do have questions, suggestions, or if you want to see something in the next video, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Until next time, see ya.